You are about to listen to the life-transforming message of Reverend Faye Abraham Adesanya of the Teacher Ministries, a ministry committed to teaching the truth of the Word of God. It is our prayer that the truth of this message will change your life for the better. Second Kings chapter 2 from verse 19 to 22. As well, I want you to open to, to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 to 16. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 19 to 22. I read, And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant as my Lord see it, but the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, Thus said the Lord, I have healed these waters and there shall no, not be from thence any more death or barren land. Verse 22, So the waters were healed unto this day according to the saying of Elisha which he spake. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13 through 16. Matthew the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. It says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and they give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light, verse 16, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. By the grace of God today, I want to speak to us on what I've titled, We Are Change Agents. We Are Change Agents. I want you to tell your neighbor, We Are Change Agents. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word and the power therein. Today, as we go through your word, we ask that your word will go through us. It will empower us and nourish us and bring us to the place where we ought to be. Make us to be what we ought to be and help us to do that which we ought to do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are change agents. We are. We are change agents. Now, let me start with a statement. This statement I first heard it from Pastor Pojima, the uh, Convener Christian Center, Lagos. And he said, disorder, and I've proven this statement to be true, disorder is the natural order of things. Disorder is the natural order of things. That is, naturally everything is going to be in disorder except, of course, something is done about it. If nothing is done about it, it's going to be in disorder. And I found this statement to be true, not just contemporarily, but, uh, but also scripturally. The Bible says so too. The Bible says so. Judges 17 and verse 6. Judges chapter 21 and verse 25. Judges 17 and verse 6, 21 and verse 25. The Bible says in those days there was no king in Israel, and so every man did as it pleased him. Every man did as it deemed fit. No king, everybody was behaving. In fact, the Bible says that where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is, where there is no law, no proper enforcement of law, lawlessness will be the order of the day. Corruption is, is, is on the rise and increase in our, is the order of the day in our country because there is no proper law enforcement. So this being the situation, there is therefore need to instill order and change. To instill it. It's not going to come naturally. It must be instilled. It must be enforced. But our disposition, especially as Christians, towards change is usually passive. We know that things ought, we know how things ought to be. We know that there is need for change. But somehow we are hoping that some other people will change things or that things will change on their own over time. We know how things are supposed to be. We know that this country is not supposed to be like this. We know that our family is not supposed to be like this. We know how things ought to be. We have a picture in our mind of how it's supposed to be. But somehow, as Christians, I notice that we are usually docile. We are usually passive. We are wishing somehow that, well, somebody else will change it. Or worst case scenario, we are even thinking that over time it will change it. Time does not change anything. 
It does not change anything. It's people who change things. We are always passive. Sometimes we complain, we comment and even lament. But those will not change anything. Have you seen people? I've, I've seen people, especially when you go around the uh, newspaper stand. This man did this, this man did that, this man did all the, I mean, all this, your commentary that you are running. It will not change Nigeria. It won't. It won't. You see talk shows on radio and TV, they will use, <laughs> my friend, one of my friends said they will use out of one hour, 55 minutes to talk about the problem. And five minutes you say, so what do you think we can do about it? It will not change it. It will not change it. Commentaries, lamentation, this country is, is bad, is this. It will not change it. Our leaders are bad. These people, they are, it, the, all those ones will not change anything. Our complaints, they will not do anything. Sometimes we even claim that we are waiting on God to change. Remember I was speaking on the subject, we are change agents. We are waiting on God that well, God will do something if he wants to do something. As though when God is tired of all the mess, he will step in and change it himself. <laughs> uh, we say we are waiting on God. Most of the time when we say we are waiting on God, we are lying. Sincerely lying. You know, you can lie sincerely. You don't know you are lying. You are sincere about it, but you are actually lying. You understand? Uh, you, you, you are sincerely lying. That's what Christians do many times. We are waiting on God. The truth is that God is the one waiting on us many times. He's waiting on us. Second Peter chapter 3 and, and verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promises. As some men count slackness. He said, but he's patient towards us. That he's waiting that we will repent. That is to say, even God is waiting on you to do something. For him to do his own part. Have you seen wrestling match? That uh, they are in pairs. One person is in the ring. One person is outside. If they want to, if if the person inside the ring is about to die and he doesn't want to die from the oppression of the other person, all he just needs to do is to stretch forth his hand and touch the other person. Otherwise, that person has no legal ground to enter the field. Many times we claim that we are waiting on God to change. Other is your family. Things things ought to change. You don't like the way things are in your family or your business or or your society, or the church. I bet people in the church, they say, we don't say, our church is this, our church, in fact, I will change church. I say, when you change church, when you get to the other one, you meet with another version of this problem. Everywhere there are human beings, there must be problems. So, changing church, you know, is to even solve your problem. No, no, in fact, I visit people that say, Nigeria is bad, Nigeria, and you go to the, you go, you travel out, you change, does, it, does that change Nigeria? It doesn't even change you. Because, in fact, you are even adding to their own problem there because you are not used to, to repairing things. When you get there and things look like it's, you keep changing, where, where will you run to at the end? Where? So when we claim that we are waiting on God, God is actually the one waiting on us. If anything is going to change on the earth, God is counting on us, his children, to do it. God is counting on us. It's counting on us to do it. If, you're, if something is going to change in the education sector, if it's going to change in business, it's going to change in politics, uh, if anything is going to change, God is counting on you. God is not going to jump from heaven and say, okay, I'm coming now, I'll come and change. It's a lie. I ain't going to help. You have to, we are the ones he's expecting to do it. Remember that Matthew 5 and verse 13 to 16 that we read? He said, you are salt. You are light. You are a city that is set on a hill. Salt is there to change the taste of food. Light is there to change darkness so that there will be light. A city that is set on a hill is there so that it will be an example to others. We are change agents. We are salt. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 19 to 22 that I read. The story of Jericho. Jericho it looks like it's fine, but nothing was happening. Things were terrible. And the elders called Elisha. Elisha, do something about our case. Elisha said, do you have salt there? They said, yes, bring it. Do you have a new cruise there? Bring it. He took it, took it to the source of the river there and poured it there. He said, I'm be healed from this moment. Salt. The same salt, Matthew 5 verse 13, talks about. We are salt. We are salt. We are change agents. We are change agents. We are salt, we are light, we are change agents. 
And God has, has strategically positioned each and every one of us in our respective fields, our families, our and positions, ministries, countries. Everywhere you find yourself, God has strategically positioned you there to effect a change. You are not there by accident. Listen to what Mordecai told Esther. Esther chapter 4. You see, God, God, God is counting on you and I. That's just it. He has positioned you where you are so that you will effect a change. Stop saying you are waiting on God. God has given you the power to do it. The angel told Gideon, I said, go in this thy might. Esther chapter 4 verse 14. Mordecai I said to Esther, I said, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall there enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. He said, And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? God foresaw and foreknew that a man was going to plan against the Jews. God needed somebody to be in the politics of, of, uh, of those days who will be able to stand and turn that plan around one way or the other. Look at how God has been doing the work. He made sure that diversity is removed for, for flimsy excuse. And arranged that Esther, a child of God, will be there. So that by the time a man did do a man begin to cook up that plan, there'll be somebody, a change agent on the ground, who'll be able to turn things around. That's what Mordecai was telling him. He said, You are in the kingdom for such a time as this. In your family, your your place of work, your the field where you find yourself. You are not there by accident. You are there strategically to cause a change. God is counting on you. Don't disappoint God. It's counting on you. It's counting on you. Joseph was just in Egypt at the right time that there will be famine in Egypt. Daniel was just in Egypt, in, in Babylon at the right time. God strategically positioned them there. It didn't look like, the, the surrounding situation looked like terrible, but God was putting them there so that when something is about to happen, please cause a change for God. We are change agents. God is counting on us. God is counting on you and I. He is. Somebody said he saw a vision some time ago of Jesus. And uh, he asked Jesus in that vision, Who did you, who did you uh, hand over the preaching of the gospel to? Jesus said, I handed it over to the 500 people. You know, in 1 Corinthians 15, the Bible talks about 500 disciples who were present when Jesus ascended. And the man asked Jesus in that vision, what if the 500 disappoint you? He said, there are 120 people who will not disappoint me. You know, in Luke chapter 10, the Bible talks about, uh, no, no, in Acts chapter 2, the Bible talks about 120 disciples who were in the upper room waiting. He said, what if that 120 disappoint you? He said, no, there are still another set of 70 that will not disappoint me. You know, in Luke 10, the Bible talks about a group of 70 people that is sent to preach the gospel. He said to, the, to Jesus in that vision, if that 70 disappoint you, he said, no, I have a group of 12, the disciples. In Luke 9, we find that he sent 12 of them out. And Jesus, the man said, if those 12 disappoint you, he said, I have a group of three, Peter, James, and John. They will not disappoint me. He said, Jesus, what if those three people disappoint you? He said, well, I have Peter. Then, he said, what if Peter disappoints you? He said, well, I'm counting on him. And that is the truth. God is counting on you. Without you, I mean, there's nothing. It doesn't mean that God is handicapped, as it were, but it's in your hands. He will not not force it. He will not jump and come and do it for you. He's counting on you. If you don't like the situation of, of, of your family, God put you in that family so that you will cause a change. Some people, they wake up, what they complain is that, why am I born into this kind of family? No money, no, no, they could not even afford to send me to school. The reason why God put you into that family is so that you will change that story. Some wishing that you were put in a better situation. Some people say, why, why was I even born into this country? You know, there's a joke that they crack and they said that uh, when the child was being born and the child looked, he said, he asked the nurse, which country is this? They said, Nigeria. I said, I'm not coming. <laughs> he went back. No, no. There's a reason why God, that is why God did not ask us before sending us to the family. He did not say which family, 
do you like to be go go uh, which family will you like which uh, uh, which country if God has asked us I'm sure Nigeria Nigeria will not have one single soul nobody will ask Burundi all those camera where now lie you will find everybody say England US you understand no but God put us here to effect a change we are strategically positioned you and I are the ones God is counting on to effect the much needed change in our society. We are change agents. Obadiah 1 and verse 21, the Bible says, Our Savior shall arise out of Mount Zion. Deliver us. God is counting on us. As Christians, particularly. You see, the church, the church is, is, a, is a training ground. All this, we are the only football club that trains and trains and does not do anything. You come to church, they keep preaching to you, but go outside and do something. Well, JJ Jet. Salt is not useful in the, among salts. You understand? It is when it gets to the market, when it gets to the food, that is where it can prove that it is salt. All these are our tongues and to promote but and all the preach praying and everything. It's good though. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, we are not to preach to ourselves, we are to preach to the world. We are to effect change in the world. We are. Romans 8 and verse 19. The Bible says the annex expectation of the uh, my creature awaited the manifestation of the, of the sons of God. That is even the creature is waiting on you. Everything is waiting that. Let these people begin to move. Let them begin to do something. We are changing it. So the big question now is how are we going to effect this change? How are we going to effect a change? How? And I will mention just about four things, and uh, I will explain them in a hurry because of time. And I, I my prayer is that a, a fire of change and revival will burn inside of us, and that as we live here, we use it to affect other people and affect lives and change. You see, change is, is communicable; it can be you, it's infectious. When you change, you can change another person like that. Everybody will change. We need change in this country. We need it. And not only in this country, in every sector of life, there's need for change. Well, so how do we effect this change? One, we change. Ourselves, we need to change. Two, we need to pray for change. Three, we need to confess change. And four, we need to get involved. And I, I will explain them. Change, one, pray for change or pray change. Three, confess change. Four, get involved. One, change. You want to change the world, change yourself first. Somebody said, my dream is to change the world. And I tried all my life. And then I discovered that before I can change the world, I need to change my country. Before I can change my country, I need to change my whole state. Before I can change my state, I need to change my tribe. Before I can change my tribe, I need to change my family. I need to change myself first. So, before you think of changing the whole world, change yourself first. Change. Change. If you are going to change the world, you must begin with yourself. Begin with yourself. Begin with yourself. Matthew 7 and verse 3 to 5. Jesus said, why do you look at your neighbor that has a, 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 a small speck in his eye? And you, you have beam. And you are telling him to remove it. He said, you remove this the beam in your eye. Then you will see clearly and to be able to remove the speck in another you have not changed, you are asking another person to change. It's not going to happen. Real change must begin from the nucleus. It must begin from inside out. Start with yourself. Be the change that you want others to, to, to change. You want others, what you want others to, to see in others, let them see it in you first. Let them see it in you. Typify or exemplify the change you want to see in others. Be a prototype of change. Be a prototype of change. Let people be said. Let, let it be said that okay, this is the best. This is how we want you to be. Let you be the example that you are preaching to others. First Timothy four and verse uh, verse twelve. Paul t- wrote to Timothy. He said, "Let no man despise thy youth." He said, "But you be that an example of the believers in conversation, in love, in faith, in spirit, in charity." Be an example. 
We are change agents. We are called to change our society, change our environment, change our surrounding, change our nation, change our country. But we ourselves must change first. We must. It begins with us. Romans 2 and verse 21 to 24. Romans 2 verse 21 to 24. The Bible says, You that teach others not to sin, do you sin? I mean, you can, somebody is committing fornication, say, don't fornicate, oh, don't fornicate. <laughs> you are smoking, you are oh, don't smoke, don't smoke. You know? <laughs> it, it, it's not going to work. You change first. You change first. Be the change you want others to do. To, to do. Be a change. Somebody said, people hear what you preach, but will ultimately do what you do. You, you understand? As they've heard you. You are telling them, do this. They've heard you. But what they will eventually do is what you are actually doing, whether in the open or in the secret. And I find it to be true even as a pastor. I can stand here and be telling you, we need to be more prayerful. Let us pray. If I'm not praying in my closet, it's not going to happen. The spirit to pray will not jump on you. You understand? And so, before you say this thing, if you need change in your family, you want your family, let's say you're the father of your family, and you, you want things to change. You be the change first. You want your people to fast. You fast. When you fast three days, tell them to fast one day. It, the, the energy to do it will be released. But you have not fasted and you say, we are going to fast. We are, it will keep being, we are going to fast. You will never see that fast happen. <laughs> you smoke. You say, smoking is not good for you. And your children know you are smoking. They say, yes, I will have heard you. You know, African culture doesn't permit you to talk against an elder. But they, and the secret is which they will smoke. Be the change that you want to see in others. The right formula for change is do as I do, not do as I say. Is do as I do. Paul said, "Be a follow, be, follow me." First uh, Corinthians eleven verse one. Be a follower of me, even as I follow Christ. Even as I follow Christ. Acts chapter one and verse one. Uh, 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 Luke wrote to Theophilus. He said, Oh, most evident Theophilus, he said, The former things have I written unto you of the things that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Jesus never taught anything he did not do. Jesus never taught anything he did not do. And such is supposed to be our life too. We do it and then we teach it. You say you don't want people to litter the ground. You too, when you eat something, keep it in your pocket until you get to the nearest dustbin. You understand? Be the change you want to see in others. We keep complaining our leaders must change, they are corrupt, they are corrupt. But in our own respective little, little offices, we too are proving corrupt. We are doing corruption. Corruption. You will not do something except something you are tipped. And you have, he, 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 just because you are collecting 15 naira bribe and that person is collecting 1 million naira bribe, does not make any difference. You are the, you are the same. You are the same. You are the same. Be the change you want to see in others. You change first. So if our families, our businesses, our schools, government is going to change, our lives must first demonstrate the change. Otherwise, there's no hope. There's no hope. Matthew 5 and verse 13 that you read, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savour, where will it shall be salted? It is just good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. If you salt is not salt, he said, that it is corrupted. You that are supposed to salt others, change others, but you yourself, you have having no problem. He said it's good for nothing, but to be thrown away. If we are going to cause a change in the life of others, we ourselves must first of all change. We must change. Salt must be in a new cruise. That's what uh, Elijah said, Second Kings chapter 2, from verse 19 to 22 that we read. He said, put that salt in a new cruise. That is, don't let it be contaminated. Let it be. Let it retain its value, a new cruise. Let it retain its, its value so that it can change others. Until you are different, you can't make a difference. You can't. Until you are different, you can't make a difference. Romans twelve and verse two, the Bible says, "Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed." By the renewing of your mind, then shall you be able to prove, so that you'll be able to prove that which is the good and acceptable will of God. That is, if you don't conform, you don't join them. 
and you transform yourself, you are changed, you are changed yourself, he said, then will you be able to prove what is the right will of God? The Bible says of Daniel, he said, Daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself with the portion of king's meat. If we are going to change anything at all, we ourselves must change. We must change. Luke 22, verse 31 to 32. Luke 22, from verse 31 to 32. Jesus told uh, Peter, he says, Peter, the devil has decided to sift you as wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. In verse 32, he said to him, he said, but when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. That is when you, you are converted. That is you, you have changed. Then you will be able to strengthen others. Paul wrote to Timothy, 1 Timothy 4 and verse 16. He said, take it to thyself and to thy doctrine. Then shall you be able to save yourself and them who hear you. Any message that does not touch me, the pastor, you can't expect me to preach it and it will turn, turn you, change you. It will not. It must first of all change me before it will change others. I must first of all change before I can change others. So number one, what does God expect us to do to effect a change? We ourselves, we expect us to change and be in proper order. And be in proper order. Number two is to pray change. You change to you pray change. Prayer powers change. Prayer powers change. For there to be a change in the physical, it must be ignited in the spiritual. Things happen from the spiritual to the physical. If you want things to change on the physical, first of all, change it in the spiritual. If you want the fruit to change, you change the roots. It's when the roots change, you will see something will happen to the fruits. Prayer enforces change. It enforces change. You don't like the way things are going in your family. Take time to commit it to God in prayer. Pray about it. Consecutively and continuously until you see the change that you want. Prayer changes things. In Matthew 6 from verse 9 to 10, Jesus was, he said, he was teaching, teaching about prayer. And uh, he said, after this man, I pray ye. He said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is, prayer will enforce the will of God in heaven. It will enforce it on earth. There is no disorder in heaven. Things are perfect in heaven. But on earth, there is a lot of disorder. And the way to impose heaven on earth is in the place of prayer. Prayer enforces change. Prayer changes things, places, situations, and people. Prayer will change it. There is nothing prayer cannot change. You know, the Bible says that the heart of king, of kings is in, the, is in the hands of God. As the rivers of water eternally whithersoever it wills. Proverbs 21 and verse 1. You can pray. No matter how hard somebody's heart is, you can pray. God can change the heart of the person. No matter how hard situation is, no matter how hard, if you will pray, God can change it. He can. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. Second Chronicles 7 and verse 14. The Bible says, If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and repent and, and seek my face and pray, he said, I God will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. You want, you want healing upon the land. You want healing upon your family. You want change in your business, your career, anything at all. He said, pray. When you send a prayer to heaven, God will change. He will change things for you. A prayer is a legal and legitimate invitation to the heavens to change things. Send a prayer to heaven. Send a prayer to heaven. Enough of complaining, commenting, observing, and lamenting. Enough of those things. Start praying for change. Start praying for change. You know, many times, it's easier to complain. It's easier to comment. Do you know that many things we complain about, we have never taken the time out, really, to pray about those things. Yeah, I don't mind that, but it's always behaving anyhow. I don't mind it. This is my boss. This is my boss. This is my work. This is my work. 
Even Nigeria, you find a lot of Nigerians every now and then. This country is a terrible country. Now, the same energy to cause you to be complaining and making all those comments, if it is just a minute a day that you say, God bless Nigeria. Do you know one good thing about Americans? You find a typical America, whether it knows God or doesn't know God, say, God bless America. How many Nigerians ever say, God bless Nigeria? The amount of causes Nigerians alone are causing Nigeria is enough for Nigeria to be caused. I mean, we just, I mean, we complain, we lament, we say all kinds of things, but we don't pray. All those things will not change things. Enough of all those things. Start praying for change. Start praying for change. Charles Wesley said, God will do nothing except in response to prayer. God will not do anything. Don't expect that God will do something. You pray. That's when God will move into action. Until you pray, it is assumed that you are coping. God is okay. You are still okay with it. That's why you are not praying. That's why. The children of Israel, they spent 430 years in captivity. They were supposed to spend 400 years only. When God released them after 430 years, I haven't spent 30 years since that God said, I have heard their cry. Which means up until that time, they were not crying. God wants to release them, but they seem to be okay. Somebody told me something about prayer years ago. He used this explanation, and um, it's a wonderful explanation. To tell us that until you are praying, until you pray about something, God assumes that you are coping, you are okay. He knows you are suffering, no? but he assumes that, okay. That is why in Matthew 6 and verse 8, the Bible says, God knows the things that you have need of. But in Matthew 7 and verse 7, we say, ask and it shall be given. The fact that God knows that you are suffering is not enough for him to move into action. It's until you ask. It's until you ask. Somebody told me this example. He said, a, a man came from work. And the wife served him a bowl of eba and small soup. She just scooped a little soup and gave it to him. And he man- managed that soup to finish that big bowl of eba. The wife returned and said, you managed that thing? He said, well, that's what you served me. He said, no. The whole pot is there. You gave money to prepare it. What will it cause you to say, give me more soup? He said, that is the way prayer is. When we are in uh, any issue and we don't pray for change, God is under, he just, he was under where you are coping. You can still manage. That's why you are not praying. But when you turn to God in prayer and say, Lord, we need change, then God knows that indeed you, are, you need change. Prayer changes things. You want things to change for you, change for your family, change for your business, change for your community, change for the nation, change even in a church. Pray about it. People say, our pastors, they are just doing all kinds of things. They are doing this. How many of them have you prayed for? Do you know the kind of attacks that, they are, that is on them every now and then? Instead of you to even pray for them, you are even lamenting. And, you know, pray for them. Pray. Personally, before I correct anybody, if they say anybody has, I have done this, before I begin to say, oh, that person is a stupid person, it's a useless person, pray for him. You, you Pray for him. You don't know if you are in that situation, you can even do worse. Pray. When there was need for change uh, for the Jews, so that uh, a man will not finish them off. You know what a man said? A man, <laughs> a man the Bible says for one year, he consulted the oracle. To seek for an appropriate time that they will talk to the king. And the king will not reject his proposal. And they fix a particular day. That will tell you what the devil is doing against the life of Christians and children of God. The devil is not joking about, I mean, not joking about. If you look worldwide, you will discover that there is a large scale of war against Christianity and children all over the world. Our own little one is Boko Haram. There is ISIS, there is Hamas, all kinds of things all over the world. So, the devil is currently strategizing. But we will not see change until we too rise up and pray. And so, they look for a, a man looked for a particular day and spoke to the king. And said, I want the Jews to, to be wiped off. For no reason. He even said, anybody who will kill them, we will even pay them. I mean, you can imagine. Wipe them off and we will pay you to wipe them off. That is enough stimulation. And the law of the Pashas and the Medes is that once a king signs something into order, it cannot be changed. Not even the king will be able to change it again. So they sign it to order. 
Mordecai was informed of it and told Esther. Esther said, what? He said, she declared three days fasting and prayer. She prayed and there was change. She, after that prayer, she went into the court of the king. In which case, if the king does not call you and you appear before the king, before you even say why you appear, they have killed you. Except, of course, the king sets his royal scepter and said, don't worry, leave, it, leave her. The moment she entered, because she had ten things in the, in, in the spiritual, the king just said, come, come, what do you want me to do for you? It was the king that was not asking her now what, what he would do. You understand? But she had done that in the place of prayer. Three days of fasting and prayer. If, if you, you really desire a change in your family, put it to, make it a matter of prayer and fasting. Pray about it. And then you will see change. The Bible says in James chapter 5, from verse 16b down to 18, it said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, availeth much. He said Elijah was a man of like passion like you and I. He prayed, one man, Prayed over a whole nation that there will be no rain for three and a half years. And there was no rain in Israel. According to the word of Elijah. Then after that the Bible says he prayed again and there was rain. You want change. Pray. 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 Don't just change yourself. Pray for change. Number three. Confess change. Confess change. Confession and prayer must go hand in hand. They must go hand in hand. And, and I see that this is where many Christians lose out on their prayers. You pray for healing, but you are confessing sickness. It's not going to work. Positive prayer must with, meet with positive confession to produce positive results. Don't just pray about something. Confess it. Let me read Mark 11, verse 23 and 24 actually, but permit me to read it backwards. For sake of emphasis, I read from verse 24, I read back to 23. Why I'm particularly reading it this way is because that is the order of things. You pray for change first, and then you begin to confess it. It is confession that is empowered by prayer, or backed up by prayer, that can work. Otherwise, it is just empty noise. You understand? In Mark 11, verse 24 to 23, it says, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. For verse 23, For verily I say unto you, that what whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, the Bible says he shall have whatsoever he said. I want you to notice something. In verse 23, he said, when you pray, believe that you receive it, and you shall have them. In verse 24, prayer will help you have them. He said, prayer will make you receive it. Then you will have them. In verse 23, he tells us how you are going to have it. He said, I haven't prayed, now begin to say it. He said, whosoever believe that the things which he said shall come to pass, and you don't doubt the things which you say. Keep saying it, and then you will have it. You will have it. So, don't just pray for change. Talk change. Declare change. Prophesy change. Preach change. Confess change. Oh, it's good. You, you are praying for change in your family, but be saying it. Make it a matter of confession daily. And let it be your vocabulary. My family is blessed. My family is changed. Nobody is under a curse in my family. Declare it. Words are powerful. Declare the change that you want to see. Declare the change that you want to see. Negative confession will hurt positive prayer. You are praying for a change. And, and Nigerians do this thing a lot. We come to church. Let's pray for Nigeria. We pray. The next minute as they go, I say, this country, I don't know where we are heading to. Now that's a negative confession. It's going to stop the positive prayer. Let positive prayer meet with positive confession and there will be positive results. When we are praying, God bless Nigeria. Our leaders are great. When we go outside, even though they are not behaving like this, we say, Nigeria, good luck, Jonathan. You have no choice than to be a righteous leader. When we say it, our words will conform in. If we do it by force, by force, declare the change that you want to see. Declare the change you want to see. Begin to declare the change you desire. 
Keep declaring it until you see it. And you will definitely see it. It, it may take time and uh, people will mock you in the process and tell you, well, uh, which country? It won't, it won't look like it will change, but keep saying it. Keep saying it. The Bible says in Numbers 14 and verse 28, it said, As long as I live, say unto them, As I hear you say in my ears, so will I do unto you. Keep declaring change. Change. Numbers 14 and verse 28. So words are powerful. Very, very powerful. Very powerful. More powerful beyond comprehension. That is the power of words. We cannot fully understand it. Especially the words of a believer. When you keep saying something, it is bound to happen. It is bound to happen. It is bound to happen. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and verse 21, it said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. That is the power to kill and the power to make alive. Those two extremes of change is in your tongue. He said, and they that love it shall eat the fruits thereof. There is power in words. You keep saying it. Keep saying, despite the fact that you, 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 you are not seeing it yet. Keep saying it. My family is blessed. My, keep saying it. Over time, your family will conform to it. If it is your business, keep saying it. This business is a profit-making business. This business cannot close down. Words are powerful. They are. They will change things for you. Jesus said in John, John 6 and verse 63, he said, the words that I speak to you, they are life and they are spirits. One version says it's the, it is life-giving spirits. And the Bible says in 1 John 4 and verse 17, it said, as he is, so are we in this world. So, if the words of Jesus are life and spirit, our words too are life and spirits. When we speak, have it at the consciousness of your mind that a spirit is going out of your mouth to do that which you are saying you should do. If you say, this place will draw men. Crowd will be here. Keep saying it. The spirit will go and gather those people to come. It will not happen in a day. It may not happen in a month, but it will certainly happen. Keep saying it. Confess the change that you want to see. Confess the change you want to see. So use your words to effect the change you want. Use your words. Words change and, and recreate things. The Bible tells us this entire world was created by, 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 by words. God created it by words. And we too can recreate our own world too by words. In Genesis 1, the Bible tells us that God created the heaven and earth. And in verse 2, the Bible says the earth was without form and void. Uh, theologians tell us that between verse 1 and verse 2, there is a period of time, a large period of time where the devil came and destroyed everything that God created and that is why it now became form without form and void. When God saw it, that things are, are in disarray and in disorder, he, he, he did not begin to worry and complain about it. What did God begin to say? He began to speak. Let there be light. And there was light. You can do the same too. You see that things are not working in your family, your business, society, as it should in your church. Keep declaring it, and there will be change. In James 3, and verse 3 to 4, James likened our tongue, he said it is like the horse. A horse is a strong animal. You can't tell the horse to turn like this and to turn. It will not turn. He said, but if you put a bridle in his mouth, you can use that mouth to change it, turn it anywhere you want. He said that is the power of the tongue. He said it is also like a big sheep. That is controlled by a small rudder. What controls a big ship? If you have seen it, just lead to something at the down part of the ship that the, no matter how big it is, that changes the direction. That changes the direction. That's how your words are. You can change the direction of, of your society, of your family, of your business, everything around your circle of influence by your words. By your words. So, one is that we change ourselves. Two is that we pray for change and pray change. Uh, and three is that we confess change. We talk it. 
Don't keep quiet about it. Keep saying it till you see what you want to see. But lastly also, we must get involved. And this is where the road the rubber meets the road. We must get involved. We must get involved. It is good to change and to pray for change and confess change, but we must also act change. We must also act it. You know very well that faith without works is dead. James 2 verse 17 verse 20 and verse 26. Faith without works is dead. Haven't, haven't changed. Haven't prayed for change. Haven't confessed change. Get involved. Be a change agent. Be a change agent. In Second Kings chapter 2 from verse 19 to 22 that we read. What did Elijah do with the salt that he took? What did he do with it? He poured it into the, the water, the source of the river. That is, let Christians, which are the salt of the light, let them get involved in the system. Let them get involved. Elijah poured the salt into the source of the water. All that is needed for salt to do his sweetening job is to be involved and be present in the food. You can't be salt and stay away from the food and say, salt, food be salted in the name of Jesus. It's not going to work. Salt cannot say, I confess a change. I confess it to be salted. I confess it to be salted. It's not going to work like that. What salt you need to do is enter the pot. Once you are there, you will salt the place. The same thing it is with light. Light cannot say, in the name of Jesus, darkness, go. Darkness doesn't respond. In fact, in physics, we say something that um, there's no such thing as darkness, there's no such thing as cold. Why do we say that? Because cold is actually the absence of heat. When there is heat there, there will be no such thing as, as, as cold. And darkness is actually the absence of light. It's not an entity on its own, it's just because it's not there. When you say a food is tasteless, it is not, it's not as though something called tasteless entered into it. It's just because salt is away from it. So you need to get involved. That's what I'm trying to say. Be there. Be there. If you want things to change, we can't remain aloof. We must participate. Commentators don't change the game. All those people, that's why I don't like watching ball. You stay at home. Somebody is playing football. You have a Champions League. Thousands of miles away. Say, See, coach, change him, change him, change him, change him. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> I know they hear you. <laughs> they, and they won't ever even hear you. Commentators don't change the, f- the game. In fact, those who are on the field, let's say you are even far, those who are on the field and say, Woo, ah, they are not going to change anything. Uh, worst case scenario, those of us are even officials, those referees and co. And uh, even Sir Blatter himself will not change it. The coach can do very little. Only the players that are on the field that can change the game. So get involved. You want things to change, be involved. Do something. You want your family to change, do something about it. Don't just pray and be confessing and stay aloof and say, no, they, they will change it. They will not. You get involved in it. You get involved in it. The language of change is go. Go. You go there. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 28 and verse 19, Mark 16 and verse 15, he said, go into the world. Jesus is not expecting that the whole world will just come and say, okay, we want to hear about your Jesus. No, Jesus is saying, go, go and tell them. In fact, one third of the word gospel is go. Go. We go. We, we, we get involved in the system. You say acting. They are just acting useless films. The films they are acting these days is terrible. You go and do something, you to hack your film. You cannot say, well, I mean, Nigeria, for instance, we say politics, also politics, it's a dirty game. It's this, see, and uh, all these politicians are terrible. There's, I mean, at the end of it all, we have four, five unbelievers and thieves of different category, and we have to vote for one of them. Eh? I mean, is it not what is on the option that you can choose from? Uh, we don't have somebody dead, or our whole representative there. So who do you think we will vote for eventually? We will vote for the lowest com- uh, LCM, what do you, uh, <laughs> uh, lowest common thief, so to say, uh, multiple. Who will vote? I mean, that's but until we have somebody there, 
We can, there will not be a change. All the prayers will not do much. We need somebody there. We need somebody there. God put Esther in politics. Put Daniel in politics. Put Joseph in politics. So that there will be change. Our own gospel is we stay our far. Say God bless you. No. We we'll go there. We go. How did Jesus change the people of his time? Jesus was not preaching from afar. Jesus was going to. Do you know how many times Jesus went to people's houses and, f- and had to deal with them? You have no choice. When he's involved, you will hear that is gospel by force. Change. Change. We have, uh, we have remained aloof for too much, for too long. We need Christians in every sector of life. Every sector. We cannot leave it to the hands of unbelievers. God is not expecting them to cause a change. If at all they are even going to cause a change, it's going to be for the worse. Because they are, they are the agents of the devil. Unknowingly. They are. We are the ones that are the agents of change. If it's going to change, it's up to you and I. And so we must be involved. We must be involved in sports. We must be involved in movies. We must be, let me mention things that Christians don't even like to in politics. Christians must be there. We must by force. Of course, you have to be called to be, I mean, but in one way or the other, that each and every one of us have to be there. Be there. Effect a change. Be there. Acting. Many Christians, they shy away from acting. Ah, why? Ah, that place, eh, they will tell you to dress nude. You can, there are roles there you can hack that, you know. Uh, there's a lady, uh, is it Chuka, uh, Chukuka, or Chuk, this Choma Chukuka? I heard that the reason why she's always acting some particular roles, why she will, she will uh, uh, cry and go. Cool. Hey, that's the part you, you watch a lot of movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's why she acts that kind of part. I heard that she said she will never act any part that will involve her to do anything that is against her faith. Either to act nude or something. So that's the role they give to her. You will make a name for yourself. Don't say you don't, you don't want to get involved. Be there. If they say you must do this, I will not do it. Let them get other people, but you be there. Why will not leave it to everybody? What do you think will come out of it? Music. The music we hear these days are terrible. They are either promoting illicit sex, drug, corruption, all kinds of things. We decide to sing only gospel music in the church. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth. The gospel music is primarily for Christians. If we are going to change the world, we need Christians who will be singing normal, regular music, but we sing it, and they will know that this is a good song. Do you understand what I'm saying? That, that is a Christian will be able to sing song, a love song. Let me use this, a love song, normal love song, and then you will know that this is a Christian version of it. It will not be full of all kind of rubbish. There are, there are songs that you, you will sing about life, and normal, it will not be corrupt in any kind. We need people like that. We cannot stay in the church and be wishing that things will change outside. It's not going to work. If we want things to change in the fashion industry, we need to be there. We don't have Christian tailors who will not be sewing micro mini. I just noticed all of a sudden that skirts these days have they, they, they somehow as though materials is cast in the market. We have all kind of uh, see through all kind of clothes because we don't have Christians in those places. Christians shy away from modeling. You say, ah, I don't want that kind of thing. No, do it. When you are there, they say you expose yourself. They say, I will not expose myself. When we have two, three people like that there, and you refuse to go, and you stay, they will recognize you one day. They will. They will. Be involved. Be involved. Martin Luther King Jr. said, evil will thrive. Not because evil is powerful, he said, but because of good men who refuse to participate. He said, don't mind, leave it to them. They are, they are, you know, it's going to be, he said, Nigerian police is bad, but you don't want to join the police. But now, so what do you think will affect the change? Be there. When you are there, there are, there are policemen who don't collect any form of bribe at all. When we have more people like that in the police system, it will change. It will change. What sort needs to be, to affect a change is to be present. Be present there. Be present there. We are called to separation, not isolation. So no sector should be left in the hands of unbelievers in the name that it is a dirty game. No, it is a dirty game because the players are dirty. 
when the players are clean, the game will automatically be clean. Do you know because Christians have not been so much involved in politics of Nigeria, the word Christian, Christ, Jesus, does not appear at all in our constitution of Nigeria. It's not there. But Islam, Muslim, Sharia, appear like 200 times in the same constitution, and they say we are a secular state. Because we have not been involved. Why would they? I mean, this is a secular state. And yet one part is declaring Sharia. For what? Because there are no Christians there. Why do you If we are to go by it, to why? I'm not saying that we should fight against Muslims. I'm not, I'm not against uh, them. I'm not fighting against my, my own mother was from a Muslim background. You understand? So it's not as though I'm being biased. But I'm saying that we cannot leave it into the hands of others and expect them to make a change in our favor. We have to be there. We have to be involved. Don't leave it to others. Be there. Be involved. He said, Pastor, how much change can I, I alone cause? How much change? You can do much. You can do much. Do the, as the much that you can. God is not expecting you to change everything and everybody, but he has given you power to change those within your circle of influence. When you do your own and I do my own and you do your own and everybody does his own, there will be change. There will be. There will be. Salt does not need to be as much as the food to effect a change. You say you want to cook a Congo of rice and you get a Congo of, rice, of salt. I mean, you just know that you are, what you are cooking is, is a dead portion. Aha. It's a pinch of salt. Just, God just did one Joseph in Egypt one Esther in Susan, one Mordecai at the gate, one Daniel in, uh, in Babylon, one Paul among the Gentiles, one Peter here. Yeah, they mean just parties. It is just there. Just there. You do your own part of it. I do my own part of it. And before you know it, the change will go around. It will. It will. So get involved. Don't stay aloof. Christians say we have bad leaders, yet you don't vote. Why do you think the good leaders will come? He said, we have bad leaders, but you are not, a, you are not partisan. You are not there. No, you are not contesting. Praise God. I see change coming to us. I said, I see change coming to us. There will be changes in our families. Changes in our societies. In, in every aspect of our life, business, our ministry, things will change for the better. But we first need to change. We need to pray, to cha- pray for change. We begin to confess and declare change and then we get involved and the Lord will be able to use us. We are change agents and we will effect a change in every aspect of our lives. We are sure you have been blessed by this message. For inquiries and partnership details, please call plus 234-8029-743782 or plus 234-70. 555-20824. You can also send a mail to the teacher ministries at gmail.com. God bless you.